At the NCPA this week, the Dallas Rotary Club joined the NCPA in hosting potential presidential candidate and former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee, who outlined how he would improve the economy and the State of the Union. He also shared his thoughts about the NCPA. One of the reasons I've always respected this organization is because you're not in D.C. I felt that one of the greatest and most significant aspects of the National Center for Policy Analysis is that it is located in the heart of America and its views and its positions tend to emanate from the perspective of the common sense that is utterly lacking, particularly in Washington. More than 400 attended the Huckabee Luncheon, which began with the announcement of this year's winners of the Young Patriots Essay Contest, which is designed to challenge middle and high school students to creatively solve problems in the realm of economics and public policy through the art of writing. NCPA President and CEO Alan West awarded the first place prize to Kevin Way of Plano, Texas. I'd like to present you with your certificate for the first place award for the 2014-2015 Young Patriots Essay Contest. And the most important thing that I'm sure your parents are happy about, a $5,000 check. Following the announcement of the NCPA's Tax Analysis Center's partnership with the Beacon Hill Institute, BHI Executive Director Dr. David Turk braved the Boston blizzard to visit the NCPA and meet with board members and staff. What you're going to get from us that hasn't been done before is a um, exercise that gives you good results for what will happen to the economy if you change the tax law, which are defensible in terms of what economists recognize as how economic behavior changes in response to changes in taxes. The core question is, what do people do if you increase the tax on their income? And NCPA Legislative Director Brian Williams wraps up the week in Washington. The House of Representatives passed legislation this week to repeal Obamacare. It's the latest in a series of votes that Congress has taken over the last several years to repeal that uh, health care law either in whole or in part. It's the first vote of this Congress, though, and several new members that were just recently elected had a chance to vote on that for the first time. And it's the first legislation that includes instructions for congressional committees to develop an alternative to Obamacare within the next six months. Uh, Texas Senator Ted Cruz has introduced companion legislation over in the Senate uh, that would also repeal Obamacare, but a, a vote has not been scheduled yet for that legislation. The president is not likely to sign legislation that will repeal his signature health care initiative, but the real audience for this legislation may not be the president. It may be uh, the Supreme Court across the street from me here. In about a month, they will hear, legis they will hear a, a case involving whether unauthorized taxpayer subsidies can still be used to offset the cost uh, of expensive insurance in the Obamacare exchanges. The vote to repeal Obamacare sends a clear signal to the courts through the elected representatives in Congress that Obamacare remains unpopular and that if the court should decide uh, to rule against the subsidies, Congress will concur and be ready to replace Obamacare with a free market alternative. Arguments for that case are coming up in March, so stay tuned for more updates on that. It is you and your support that enables us to continue the work that we do. From all of us at the NCPA, thank you.